Hello, welcome. I'm Pauline from Pauline's Quilters World. I want to show you about our beautiful creation here. This is for all those beautiful grandchildren you've got in your family or nieces or nephews or you might like it for yourself. This is our gorgeous hedgehog rug. Isn't it just beautiful? We've had so much fun designing this. But it's all made out of scraps of fabric, you know, busting that stash as we need to do. You can use as many different colours in it as you like. All of his little spikes or prickly bits could be all different colours. They don't even have to be the same colour. How much fun would that be to do this in all rainbow colours for those beautiful, beautiful um, cuddly people that we have in our life. But I just want to take you through step by step just quickly how we made this rug up. And we do have a pattern for it. And you do get the complete pattern for the hedgehog. It's all included in the pattern. We tell you how much fabric to use if you're going to be purchasing fabric or else, as I said, use up your scraps and just build it up to be that amount. But what we're going to do first of all um, is we've got to prepare the backing and the background for this because we're going to weave onto our backing and the batting. So let me just show you a few little things here. We'll just get rid of him. Get your pattern sheet out of the pattern and you will have to join it together because we just couldn't get paper big enough to put that whole pattern on. So we tell you where each section joins together. So cut around your pattern pieces, sticky tape it all together or however you want to put it together. You might want to trace that whole pattern out onto old newspaper or onto brown paper so you've got, you've got your original pattern to keep. But once you've got that done, cut out your backing fabric and this is the fabric we've used on the back of our our rug here. Cut this out and we're going to put it wrong side down onto the um, ironing surface. Then we use the Hobbs heirloom double-sided fusible batting. Now I strongly recommend this. It's a beautiful beautiful batting to use but being fusible it's going to hold everything together for us and I'll explain all of this as we move on but if you do purchase this batting I just want to tell you a little bit about it it's 80% cotton 20% polyester it has a very light fuse all over it on both sides it's double sided fusible so when you get it it's going to be stuck together because it's rolled under heat to make it um, stick together for easy shipping around you're going to peel it apart. You'll feel like you're ripping it. You can hear that. It's not actually ripping, it's just pulling the fuse pieces apart. So cut it, open it right out, and it tells you in the pattern how much to need. You could cut this out to your pattern shape, and we do say with your backing and your batting, cut it bigger than what your um, what your pattern is because we need to allow for pulling in and shrinkage and then we'll trim it back to the right shape when we're finished. So cut this out to the right size. Mine's not cut out to the right size but this is just to explain to you how this all works. Put the batting down onto your ironing surface and you could do this on a table, it's not going to affect the table because the nice thing about the batting, even if I put my iron on top of it, it doesn't, nothing sticks to my iron. And if I'm ironing this batting straight onto my ironing surface, it doesn't stick. Put your pattern, your backing piece on it that you've cut out and then with a hot dry iron you slowly press. Now I find using this batting that's already um, got the fusing on it, it's not stiff. It doesn't clog up your needle. It doesn't break your threads. I tried lots of different fusible battings and I had all sorts of problems with it. This one I don't. I prefer having the fuse on the batting than using the spray base, but that's a personal choice of mine. I just find it make, gets things all messy. But you notice I'm moving the iron very slow over the surface. If I iron fast, it's not going to adhere because the fuse won't, um, won't be activated. It needs a slow iron to activate the fuse. And we just keep moving. You notice it's not sticking to my ironing surface. Just go all the way through and press all of that. Once we've got that done, we're ready to start um, getting our, cutting our strips to weave them onto this base. 
Now we do say in the requirements that you need quite a bit for your backing because the only way um, that you're going to be able to finish this off or the neatest way is we're going to make a facing out of the backing fabric and that facing pattern is also in the pattern when you get this will have also have the um, the pattern for the facing that goes on to the back of this but that's a bit later down the track so we've got this all fused on this would be cut to size and I find I love these big scissors for cutting this because it cuts through just beautifully so you can either iron the batting on as one piece and then cut around your shape or you could cut your batting out first before you iron it on whichever way you like to do so cut it all around we'll just get rid of this bit here then we're going to cut our strips of fabric now we're going to use different um, sasha tools to do all of this just cut all of this off and we're ready to get started with our strips of fabric so as I said before you can choose to use definite colors for this or you could use up all of your scraps there we are all trimmed up now we've got our strips of fabric cut and these were cut let me just check the measurement three and three quarters inches so if you have to join your strips together that's fine just join them with a, a normal seam allowance um, you could join them on the diagonal or on the straight whichever you would prefer but I would recommend on the diagonal if you had to join your pieces because the joins will sit much flatter for you so what we're going to do cut the strips in the pattern it'll tell you what size to cut each of the strips fold in those edges till it meets in the middle just let it meet then we're going to use the 1 and 7 8 inch sasha tool now a lot of you may already know about our original tools this is the set of 10 tools that we do we do have 18 different sizes but this pack here is the most popular 10 but unfortunately the 1 and 7 8 is not in that pack but we found it is the best size to use for this style of rug um, we'll go so now we hold the tool by the handle we'll go up from underneath we're going to go over that center bar and back down and that's what it looks like when we've got it threaded in now put this end on or the whole strip onto the ironing surface we're going to use the double fork pin this is a double pin a twin pin and we're going to pin into the ironing board to give that a nice anchor I find pinning with two separate pins I put them in at different times I get different tension one side of the fabric can start to stretch more than the other as you iron. so the double pin is the solution for that just cup up the sides now all of our sasha tools have a curve here and I've designed it with that curve there so that the side of the iron fits into the curve now if you've got a little ridge around your iron like a lot of them have just keep the iron really close to the tool and just press with the iron don't try and pull the tool down as you go it's designed so the tool the iron just slides that as you go down so just keep coming down you notice I keep cutting up cupping up the sides with my fingers if they're big long strips which most likely they will be iron about 12 inches then move the pin up to where you are that'll keep it all aligned for you and nice and neat so make up all of your strips all your different colors we'll just do another one fold it in and in press now I find pressing this allows you to get into the tool nice and accurate if you don't press it it's very hard to keep it folded neatly so hold it by the handle up from the bottom and over the top pull it through pin into the ironing surface 
cup up the sides and push with the iron and it can't get any simpler and just keep pushing down to get the whole strip done now we've used different sizes to make this rug these are the wider ones using the one and seven eighth inch tool then the green strips that are going to be woven through and this color here the multicolor they're cut two inches wide and they go through the one inch wide tool okay so all of those are in the in the pattern instructions so back to our piece now and then we're going to start weaving this through I might just give myself a bit more room here bring it over a bit closer so we're going to lay these strips down across the body of the hedgehog now we want them nice and close we don't want to have a gap here because we don't want to see the batting once we get all this done you won't see the batting so long as you lay them out nice and flat and as I said use as many different colors as you want lay them down and you just keep going until you fill up the whole piece now what we do next after we've got them all laid out you can either pin it each one but you're going to have lots of pins all the way around that big shape I prefer to use the glue the Roxanne glue based it and all we do is put oops that lit up put little dots of glue underneath each of those strips you don't need a lot keep them all nice and tight together all the way around so go all the way around and do that and then do the other end exactly the same I haven't got my strips long enough for this but I'll we'll just pretend or make believe we're doing this right and then once you get all of that done on both ends just with your hot iron set that glue now even if I had dots of glue here and I got it made a mess the glue doesn't stick to the base of your iron it's it's really wonderful stuff to use so don't be afraid if you're going to get in a mess with that so then we've got that all going one way now we're ready to start weaving but we need to before we start weaving we need to make sure we're going to weave the the smaller strips through on the 45 degree angle so remember this is all filled with your first lot of strips with your one and seven eighth inch strips i use the sasha ruler or use a ruler that's got a 45 degree angle on it because we want to weave through on the 45 degree angle so this ruler here is great because it's got all of these 45 degree angles on it you can line it up on one of edge of your strips you could line it up on the edge of this strip you can get references all the way through then use a, a good quality fabric marking pencil I'm just going to change the color of the lead in this one because I've got black lead in and I think the white lead will mark this better so I'm going to push the top down and hold my thumb on the top while I pull this black lead out now I've already got a white lead in here I'll click it down till the white lead comes out and then I'm going to put the black lead back in so I use the one pencil I always have the two colored leads in there and then I can draw any on any fabric I want so draw across here on your 45 degree angle this ruler here every time I move the ruler I've always got one of these lines laying on this straight edge so I can stay on that 45 degree angle all the way across that rug all right so now we're going to weave our smaller strip through okay this was put through the one inch wide tool now to do all this weaving I like to use the bodkins 
This is a tool that we um, have always had. It's been out for many, many years to thread elastic and cord through our pajamas and all sorts of things. There's two in the pack. I'm going to use this one. It's got a little teeth underneath here that grab the fabric and then it's got a little ring here. So once I put my fabric into the tool, it's like a jaw. Put it in like so and pull the little ring down. That locks it in place. It won't come undone. So now we're going to just start weaving this through. Go under and over, under and over under and over and we just keep going and filling that up okay with our we've work. got the second color now in here so we're going to start and we're going to go over the top and under so once again you could use as many different colors here as you want just to make it look really nice now make sure you keep those nice and tight now we'll go back and put another green one in Clamp it up, just go under and you can see the glue holds this nicely in place for us and we don't lose those first strips that we put down, they're not going to get out of place on us. Over, under and like making rugs like this there's not a lot of sewing in it, it's really easy to do. So after you put every few rows in make sure you keep it nice and tight now to keep yourself on the 45 degree angle, do keep checking occasionally. Use your ruler. I've got one of these lines laying on the edge of this fabric just to make sure that this strip is still laying in my 45 degree angle. So it's really great because you can keep working across the, the whole rug lining up one of these lines and I find with my big long ruler that's only got one 45 degree angle with it, I'm shifting that long ruler um, all the time. But here I've got reference points all the way across. So just do do that check often that you're keeping that 45 degree angle right. And you just keep um, weaving your fabrics till you get the whole lot done. Once you get all the weaving done all the way around, all the way through we suggest you then stitch around the outside edge because you don't want any of this to move um, you want it to stay all nice and tidy for you there's another oops gone the wrong way how easy is that to do got to go under this one so once you get it all done do double check yourself that you haven't done what I just did and got one of my unders and overs wrong so there's my original line that I drew. So I'm just making sure these are all kept nice and tight. Once you get that all in there, glue these ends so they're all sitting nice and secure. Also, glue one end and press it with the hot iron. Then go up to the other end and pull the strip so that it's nice and tight and it'll sit in there beautifully for you. Then once you get all of that done, give it a good press because these strips now will adhere to your fusible web and this is where it's absolutely wonderful because it's going to stop any movement pressing that all with that hot iron. Don't use steam in your iron, make sure your iron is a dry iron and just press it so that all your strips, all these first strips you put down are going to adhere to that batting and you can see now that that sits beautifully flat it's going to all stay together for us the next step we do is we put an open toe foot on our machine now this foot is a great foot for any any machine you can buy one for any brand any model machine it has nothing here so what we're going to do is put this foot on our machine, put the monopoly in clear thread in the top and the bobbin of your machine and this thread we sell it with really clear instructions of how to put this, how to wind this onto your bobbin and how to thread it up into your machine so it doesn't jam up, it doesn't break, it doesn't melt. 
this is not a nylon thread it is a mono poly thread so I can put a hot iron on it and it does not melt and my machine loves it so put that in your machine top and bobbin put this foot on and then we encourage you to then stitch in the ditch so we're going to put our needle right up against this fabric here and we're going to stitch right down close all the way through then we'll come down this side and stitch all the way through here and we'll do that on every row then that is anchoring all of our layers together so we get no movement whatsoever so that's all the weaving done so then you would um, if your mats moved in shape put your pattern back on it and trim exactly to the pattern then we're going to make all the spikes for around the edge so to do that we're going to use a four inch strip of fabric cut a four inch strip of fabric and then cut it into four inch squares just like we have here very simple this process we're making prairie points if you don't know how to do those we're just going to fold them on the diagonal and press okay press with the hot iron and then we're going to fold it again like so and press so this is what it's going to look like okay so this is now our straight edge that we're going to sew onto our our woven pieces so let's go over that again cut your square now there's different ways to make prairie points we could fold it this way in half then we can fold it in on one side and then fold it the other side okay so it gives you the same shape but you can see it has that little join up through there we just felt this looked more like the spikes of the um, the hedgehog than what this one did so we'll unfold this one and we'll fold it the other way so on the diagonal it just adds a little bit of flair to the rug and gives the children something to feel you know you can talk about it you can talk all about hedgehogs and what they what their benefit is in in um, our environment it's all exciting things to make up all these sort of rugs so we've trimmed off the edge which I'm just going to do now and use really good quality scissors these scissors that we sell are fabulous because they've got the really big handle here my hand fits in it beautifully they'll cut through all of our layers beautifully without any problems and you can see that glue is holding everything beautifully for me not going to get any movement okay, so there's our trash Okay, so now we're going to lay our points laying in like so and just overlap them a bit now we've got this open edge make sure that open edge oops goes the same way now on your pattern there'll be a, a mark where to start the points and where to stop them okay so make sure you mark that on your pattern just overlap them about half an inch and you just then stitch them in place just top stitch them in place so they all fit there then the next step that we need to do is pop the head on he needs a head so when you cut your backing and your batting out you would have cut the head shape but then we need to cut you in your pattern you'll have a pattern shape there for his head that you'll cut just out of this fabric so cut this shape out and then lay it down onto this edge here so this raw edge here will lay onto your woven edge glue it in place and press it onto your batting and then we've made a half inch bias strip and put across here so in your pattern we give you clear instructions for that and oh, before we put that on don't forget you've got to make the little ear and in your pattern we show you how to make this little ear and put a little pleat in it 
So put that on and then you are going to do the eye and we've just satin stitched or zigzagged around here. The mouth is just a satin stitch or a zigzag that's closed right up. So put them in place. Um, you know, you can give them eyelashes. You can do all sorts of lovely features. Certainly don't want a sad face. Make, make it have a happy face. Once you get all of that done, it's then time to cut your facing out. You lay, and you may have to join your facing up because it, it's a very big long area. It would take a lot of fabric if you cut it out as one piece. On, on the pattern will tell you if you have to join the, the um, facing together, do allow your quarter inch seam for that. So you would lay your facing on this side of the rug. You'll stitch all the way around. Then you'll turn the facing to the back. Now I don't know if you can see the facing. We've done it out of the same colour as the backing. So we've turned it to the back. Make sure you pull the prairie points out nice and flat. Turn the edge under and glue it into place and then we've hand stitched this all the way around. So the facing goes all the way around the edge of the um, the whole rug and then we just thought he'd love to have a little pom-pom sitting on the end just on his nose to give him a little bit of character you know there's lots of things you can do with the weaving um, here we've got a cushion that we've made this is all this strip this newsprint fabric is all woven unders and overs just like we showed you and then and it's another great way of using up the stash and then we've cut some applique flowers out and put on we've used this different size sashes and made some bias to put around just to decorate that up the other thing here is I've woven a little vase used different size tools woven the strips down this time I left a little bit of background fabric you can see the background fabric I wove onto that tealy colored fabric but I decided to leave a little space in there so that that shone through just gives it a little bit more of a um, an effect and then I've put it onto this little wall hanging so you can see you can use weaving for all sorts of things and it really adds texture to the to the whole um, overall effect of whatever you're creating but this was really about showing you how to make this gorgeous hedgehog and I think if you made that up for somebody that's special in your family and gave it to them you know like a grandchild or a niece or a nephew or just a you know a beautiful little child out there I think they would absolutely love this on their wall or on their floor it's it's texture it's it's really nice touchy feely it's soft it's cuddly so have fun have fun creating remember you need the one and seven eighth inch sasha tool the one inch sasha tool and the half inch sasha tool the Hobbs double-sided fusible batting, remember it really makes this rug just sit so flat. Other battings you're going to be pinning, you're going to have to do a lot of securing down so you don't get any movement as you do all of that stitching in the ditch through all of these colours. We do have the um, pattern for the woven um, cushion and of course our brand new pattern for the hedgehog rug. We do have the set of the 10 tools. The bodkin I find is a very, very handy tool. The um, glue is also a handy tool. We do do up different sorts of kits with the tools that we love. So have a look on our website, www.pqw.com.au or have a look on our YouTube channel um, and look at all of our videos there because there's so many other things like look at these rugs up here these are all woven these ones have batting in them so we use a different tool for them this is a placemat that's all woven just like we've done the the hedgehog so there's lots of things you can do with weaving but have a look at all of our videos on the YouTube channel and do subscribe when you're on our YouTube channel because We'd love you to get notifications when we do more videos because we've got so many new things coming out all the time. We would love you to share our videos, um, all of our Facebook um, 
lives that we put up and all our Facebook notifications. We'd love for you to share it around so we can share the joy of what we do here at, at PQW. So thanks for joining. See you next time. Bye.